welcome to this episode of Tremendous Tales with me, Liz Pichon. I write and draw children's books like the Tom Gates series and Shoe Wars. But right now, I'm very excited to talk to my super talented guest today, who is none other than the multi-award winning writer, comedian and former doctor, Adam Kay. We're going to be discussing very important subjects like snacks in Snack Chat. And I'll be asking Adam to tell us a tremendous tale and a tremendous fail because we all make mistakes. He'll be recommending a tremendous book and I'll be reading some of your letters. And you can join in in our spectacular... (laughs) It's not that spectacular. What's that sound? So before I talk to Adam, let me tell you a little bit more about him. He is a multi-award winning writer, comedian and former doctor, like I said. Um, Adam's first book, an undergraduate textbook called Rapid Obstetrics. Oh, I'm so glad I got that right. (laughs) I've been practising that. (laughs) And gynaecology didn't do particularly well. But his next book, This Is Going To Hurt, has sold over 2.5 million copies, been translated into 37 languages and is the best-selling narrative non-fiction title of the decade, spending over a year at number one on the Sunday Times bestseller chart. It is soon to be a major comedy drama for the BBC AMC, starring Ben Whishaw. His follow-up, The Night Shift Before Christmas, sold over 500,000 copies in the last three months of 2019. And his recent anthology, Dear NHS, was an instant Sunday Times number one, raising over 400,000 for charity. Kay's Anatomy, A Complete and Completely Disgusting Guide to the Human Body, is Adam's first book for children. It's a number one children's bestseller, the fastest selling children's non-fiction hardback of the decade, the best-selling non-children's non-fiction title of 2020 with over 100,000 copies sold and it's been translated into 21 languages and counting. So Kay's Anatomy is an organ by organ tour of the human body. Introducing readers to the strange, surprising and sick making world of how our bodies work and answering all the big questions like, are bogeys safe to eat? (laughs) And how much of your life will you spend on the toilet? The book is illustrated by award-winning comedian and illustrator Henry Packer. The sequel to his book is called Kay's Marvellous Medicine, and you'll get answers to questions like, what was the great stink? No, it's not what the doctors call your bum. Get ready to explore this gross and gruesome history of the human body. And this book will be out in September this year, so not long to wait. So hello, Adam. That's quite a roll call of your achievements. I sort of struggled with reading all of those. Yeah, so well made done them for all, that. I made them all up, made them all up. <laughs> I know, we, we, we were saying that perhaps we should just sort of make up our own numbers and just make it yeah, up. But you don't have I, to. That's incredible. I, I won the Nobel Peace Prize six years in a row. You didn't mention oh, that one? I didn't, no. <laughs> So, yeah, it's amazing. So you're the success of your children's books particularly. Have you enjoyed doing those then? Yeah, I've really enjoyed uh, writing for kids. It turns out that uh, my sense of humour is exactly the same as that of a 7 to 12-year-old child. So it's made it a lot, <laughs> made the process a lot easier. Are, and are bogeys safe to eat? This they are, yes. You know. everyone, everyone can relax. Everyone can relax. And, and how much time do you actually spend on the toilet? Um, we spend a... Uh, a very, a very long time on the road. It's sort of, uh, it's, it's, it's something in the order of uh, a week per year. Yeah, Is it really? Yeah, if you add it, if you add it all up. So um, you should probably bring a good book. I recommend the Pomgate <laughs> series. Snack chat. I, I am a, a terrible cook. Uh, probably the worst in the south of England. Uh, but luckily. The Twix company have come to my rescue and meant that I don't ever need to cook anything ever again. All I need to do is eat Twix. <laughs> so this is the point where I step in and say, obviously, other chocolate bars are available and carrots. Not really. <laughs> they may they may they may be available, but you're a you're a you're a loser if you eat them. Uh, I <laughs> I keep my Twixes in the fridge. Uh, uh-huh. I think there's interesting. I think there's, there's something. There's there's something very pleasing about about cold chocolate. I try not to eat more than fifty or sixty a day because I think that might that might be bad for you. As a doctor, I, 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 it's just it's just the perfect <laughs> snack. Um, and I would I, I'm happy for Twix to sponsor me. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure they could even afford to supply me with a lifetime supply of Twixes because that is a lot of Twixes. Um, would that be but, on your rider then? If you if you go and do a show or something, would you have oh, a rider yeah. of a Twix? Yeah, no, exactly, exactly. Other people might want big buckets of champagne. I just want a small tray of Twixes. How do you eat your Twix then? Is this like what? Do like you... I take the wrapper so... off. I mean, 
No, I mean more in segments, you know, like would you just eat, because it comes with, it's got caramel and stuff. Do you eat it like segments at the top? Because I, that's what I would have done. As a kid, the great what, thing about like twigs. Long, like you sort of scraping I, layers off. What? Yeah, I chew it, I chew it no. from the top. Yeah. No. <laughs> and because one of the good things so, about sorry, Liz, Twix... Liz, I've got to call the police. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is this is no good. Okay, when I was a kid, right? If you had a choice of a chocolate bar was obviously the ultimate thing to get. But if you had to make a choice, if I got a Twix, it would be really good because there were two bars, so you'd be able to make it yep. last longer. Yep. And another way of lasting it, making it last longer, is I would so I'd break a bit off and then I'd eat the top bit. Ah, uh-uh. so we eat the caramel first. Yeah, it's not that controversial, is it? I'd say that. I'd, I'd say that's absolute lunacy. <laughs> I mean, it's. <laughs> <laughs> the, the Twix Corporation have carefully designed this so that you get a mouthful of chocolate, caramel, and biscuits. Mm. Sort of, not just turn it's- it into deconstruct a Twix. <laughs> but that was half the fun of it, that I could make it last longer. Or okay, actually well- dump. Oh, well, dunking it in um, a cup of tea was quite a nice way. Oh, yeah, no, that's good. But I know, sorry, I shouldn't be Twix shaming you. You eat, you eat it how you, how you like. Mm. The important thing is that you're eating a Twix. If I have to do something... <laughs> Which I have to do quite often, like write a book. Um, yeah. I'll be like, right, okay, if I can do another thousand words, then I'll get a Twix. It's a really good point, though, because um, if you put anything like that in your books, well, I didn't. I wasn't really thinking about it at the time, so I put caramel wafers in. Um, I made that Tom's snack of choice because I really mm. like the wrapper. And again, I used to do the same thing that I just did with Twix. I'd eat it in segments. <laughs> I'd eat them... <laughs> And I had no idea as well that they, they would follow you around. Like if they suddenly became very popular, now if I go and do events, people will bring caramel wafers. And so that's a good tip. If you're going to put a snack in a book, make sure it's something you like. Oh, yeah. And no, I hadn't thought of that, actually. Um, I really love gold. I just eat gold, like big, <laughs> big piles of gold. That's what, that's what I'll have. Come to my shows. <laughs> yeah. Tremendous tales. So thank you, Adam, for sharing with us your um, snack of choice. And this brings you on to your tremendous tale. So what have you got to tell us then? I don't want them to be interested. I want them to be disgusted. And, Excellent. Um, so, Especially if it's breakfast time. Oh, exactly. Yeah. I, so I worked as a doctor and my dad was also a doctor. Mm. And um, there's something about doctors where you don't necessarily like going to see other doctors uh, uh, or going to <laughs> hospital. And so any time me or my, my brothers or my sister ever uh, required medical attention, um, we would sort of just have a go at home, and <laughs> which I thought was totally normal because you think everything that happens in your family is totally normal. And then eventually you speak to other families, you're like, oh, no, that wasn't normal at all. Um, <laughs> when I was... Nine, I was running through the playground at school and I wasn't looking where I was going because obviously Mm -hmm. and I smashed into a dinner lady and the dinner lady in question was holding um, a metal tray and I ended up with a sort of Harry Potter style zigzag uh, in my forehead, mm-hmm. but it was slightly different to Harry Potter in that it was bleeding everywhere and much more disgusting. And um, so I was, uh, I was uh, sent home, not by punishment, but it was sort of, it was, I think everyone at school was freaking out a bit. Was there any kind of medical attention at all? Or were you just sent home clasping a, a gaping wound? I imagine someone, someone put a wet flannel on it or something <laughs> and went home and uh, my, my dad cleans it up a bit and he said, do not look, do not look at your at your head. So obviously... And of course you're going to look. And I uh, had a, a quick look at my, at my, at my head uh, in the mirror and uh, I could see my skull. And <sighs> uh, that's a part of your body you're just not meant to see. And, uh, and my body responded to this by immediately fainting. And yeah. uh, eventually uh, woke up and, and, and uh, to my dad sewing up my, uh, sewing up <laughs> my, my head. Um, and I've carried this idea of sort of sort of DIY medicine with me um, <laughs> through my through my life and I was it I was at university and I was aged uh, the en- enormous age of 21 years old and I was mm-hmm. training to be a doctor and I was cycling home from from uh, my lectures 
and uh, and I slipped on some ice and I landed on the ground and both my arms hurt quite a lot and they hurt too much. I'm laughing, but I shouldn't. (laughs) No, you're very cruel. You're a famously cruel person. Um, (laughs) Yes. And 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 I and I had hurt so much I couldn't uh, I couldn't really I couldn't really um, cycle anymore. So I pushed my bike um, back to my back to my to, to to my flat. And, and then I couldn't open the door because it hurt mm-hmm. too much. Anyway, I ignored this until the morning. And in the morning, <laughs> I, I noticed that one of, my, one of my elbows seemed to be pointing the wrong way, like sort of, you know, yeah. can't see on a podcast because it was like going out the wrong way. And so I fro- phoned the cleverest person I knew in my year at medical school to say, can you dislocate your elbow? Because I know you can like dislocate your shoulder, which means it pops mm-hmm. out of its socket. Can you do your elbow? And he said, I don't think you can. I don't think it's that sort of um, joint. Um, turns out, after after another day of muddling along, that I had oh. broken both of my arms. And I went and I got my x-rays, and then they they, they put me in, in plaster in both, in both of my arms. And um, I really, really recommend only breaking one arm at a time. Actually, I recommend mm-hmm. not breaking your arms at all, because it turns out um, if you break both of your arms, you can't eat anything. Uh, and you require other people to feed you Twixes, and also you can't uh, wipe your own bum. What we're going to do now is play you a little snippet of what's that sound to see if you can identify what this sound is, and you can listen at home and see if you can guess. Okay, Adam, what do you think? Mm. Well, it sounds a bit intestinal. Is that someone putting a microphone on my tummy when I've not had a Twix recently? <laughs> the, the medical term for, for uh, uh, the, your gurgling of a tummy is borborygmus. Is it borborygmus? It, it could well be, couldn't it? Do you want to have another listen? Let's have another listen. Oh. So what is the sound then, Mark? Can you tell us what it is? Adam is absolutely correct. It is a stomach gurgling. Yes! Yes! Well, <laughs> 85, I win the £85 million prize. You do. And Excellent. a Twix. Excellent. And a Twix. I spend it all on Twixes. Oh, wow. Excellent. I was going to say, do people just tell you medical things because they know you're a doctor? You, oh, yes. You're a doctor all yeah, the time. Yeah, Even though I've not been a doctor for 10 years, people come <laughs> up to me and like, do you want to have a look at this rash? No, of course I don't want to have a look at your horrible rash. <laughs> no one wants to look at a rash. Yeah. No. But in a way. Just to let you know, Adam talks about medical procedures here, just in case you're a bit squeamish. Tremendous fail. So, Adam... Everybody makes mistakes and we would very much like to hear from our guests about their tremendous fails. So have you got a tremendous fail that you'd like to tell us? Yeah, I was going to stay with the sort of medical theme for my fail. So um, when I was, again, I was I was uh, a medical student and uh, you, you learn on the job. So they send you on, into hospitals and uh, I was working in the accident and emergency department and someone had cut their hand and the the doctor said to me why don't you sew it up I was like okay fine and I and I'd read in my textbook how to do it and I went to sew it up and I looked at the blood and I fainted Donk. so uh, I seem to do a lot okay. of fainting in these stories don't I <laughs> I'm just quite a fainty person and uh, <laughs> and that was that turns out um I'd I joined medical school to become a doctor and I was really afraid of the sight of blood so much so that I fainted. But luckily, <laughs> uh, as, the, as, the, as the, the days and the weeks and the months went by, um, I stopped getting so faint at the sight of blood. And that's, that's one of the good things about if you're scared of something or, you know, or if you've got a phobia of something, sometimes, you know, you just do eventually... Get, get used to it. And I found out that it wasn't actually that uncommon to, to, to have a problem with blood when you um, first, first deal with it. And mm. a few years later, I was working on, uh, I worked on labour wards um, most of the time, which is uh, where mums have their babies. And, mm-hmm. um, and the most common operation on labour ward is called the caesarean section, which is where the baby comes out through the sunroof. And, and you do, you just make a cut on the tummy, baby comes out, sew it all up, hooray. 
have a nice baby. Yeah, just like and, that. And <laughs> just like that, yeah. And um, it takes two doctors to do an operation. The patient's lying there. There's one on each side of the, of, of the patient. Um, one, one doctor's doing the, most of the cutting and the, and the everything, and the other one's just sort of passing you things and pulling things out the way and whatever. And I was, I was doing this operation, and a medical student was helping me. And um, I delivered the baby giving it off to the mum and I was just sort of sewing things up afterwards and the medical student fainted and fainted <laughs> face first oh, no. into the operation <gasps> uh, which was uh, that's uh, not was, ideal really is it no it's not ideal uh, it was very embarrassing for him when he eventually um, woke up had to do a lot of apologising to the to the to, to the patient um, yes. But yeah, so I had I had a sort of a relatively tremendous fail just fainting um, uh, in an A and E department. But at least it wasn't as bad as this as this poor guy who fainted literally into a into a, a patient's open operation. <laughs> so he's probably telling that story somewhere else. And saying, uh, if I if I was him, I'd keep very quiet about it. <laughs> That's an exit. No, it is true, though. I mean, sometimes I often think that you you learn more from when things go wrong, when things don't work out exactly the way that you want them to. And I've been totally. talking to other other illustrators and authors, you know, we've all had books and things that we've done that haven't ever seen the inside of a bookshop or we've had ideas that haven't worked out or something. But then you quite often will learn something about that and then go on to use it later on. So it's, I think it's a really important thing to tell sort of kids that, you know, just because things oh, go wrong, it doesn't absolutely usually agree. matter that much. Totally agree. It's like for every one success I have, mm. behind that there's 200 disasters. But generally, I only tell people about the successes so they never hear about the disasters. But the disasters, as you say, they, they, they teach you how to be better. Yeah, exactly. And then the first time I ever did a, a book event uh, and I had to go into a classroom to do some, and I thought, oh, I'll do some drawing. I'll do some live drawing. <laughs> and I picked up the pen um, on the whiteboard and my hand was shaking so much that I had to put it back down again. <laughs> I was literally going, oh, like, it's like I'd completely forgotten how to draw and I just put the pen down and went, so, <laughs> and I'm actually, to be honest, I'm still not that much better now. <laughs> I've just learned to mask it more, that's all. So there you go. Yeah, just sort of hold, <laughs> hold the pen with two hands. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. I'll just, just do wobble, lots of wobbly lines and make it up <laughs> as I go along. I'm going to draw the C. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Well, thank you very much for your tremendous fail. I think we'll all agree that um, that's a very good lesson to learn. Do not faint headfirst <laughs> into an operation. Yep. <laughs> yeah, letters. I also like to read letters. So do you get lots of letters from children as well? I do. I love it. It's what one kind of, of things do they write things. to you? Yeah, me they write, too. I really hate your book. I bet you smell quite badly. Uh, things like that. Just look really nice. <laughs> Well, I'm, I'm going to read this letter out. I got a letter here from Samuel. Um, and part of it says, I really like the fun activity at the back of your books. And I really like to use the paper banger to wake my brother up in the morning. <laughs> so I thought I'd demonstrate. He's, he's actually made, he's made a sort of paper banger. I'll, I'll put that on the, the podcast. So mm. I tried this earlier on and I just wondered if there are any... You know, again, I'm asking you medical facts when you said you haven't done anything for 10 years. But is, is there any, you know, like if you can get woken up with a really loud noise, is that dangerous <laughs> at all? <laughs> it's not. Is no, it? no, you're, that, that, that's fine. I mean, it's just not very nice. I mean, no. it's, I think it's, it's potentially dangerous for the other person in case uh, <laughs> <laughs> they throw a in bedside case, lamp at them or something. Um, but interesting, there is a condition called exploding head syndrome. Oh. And that sounds quite, it sounds quite dramatic. It is a lot less dramatic than it sounds. But a lot of people, this is really common, either when they're falling asleep or when they wake up, hear a really loud bang sound. And it's just, nothing's made a banging sound. It's just happened in their, in their head. But it's so loud that people, that it's known by the doctors as exploding head syndrome. So it doesn't actually mean that their heads explode? No, no, that would be bad. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to demonstrate. I, I did do a very loud noise. So this is the paper banger. Let's see if I can make it. All right, ready? Hang on. Let's see if I can make it really loud. One, two, three. Ooh. <laughs> that's, that's pretty loud, good. isn't it? Yeah, that's, that's pretty good. good. So, so Samuel, yeah. if you're waking your brother up like that, he's going to be really cross with you. <laughs> 
like, yeah that's it so i'm always in a bad mood in the morning <sighs> even you know yeah. even if i wake up naturally with the sun gently streaming in through the window if i'm woken up by someone making a big loud paper bang that's uh, i think that's dangerous for the person waking me up it is it's pretty impressive, though, isn't it? I mean, that's just yeah. literally a, a, an A4 piece of paper. Yeah, yeah, I've been practicing that. There you go. So there, Samuel. Whatever you do, don't wake your brother up um, with that loud noise. Otherwise, you're not going to be very popular. Also, you're risking revenge. You are. That, yeah, because, like, if you do that to your brother, then your brother might try and up the ante. And what if they come into, you know, your room and wake you up with a, you know, with a, a saucepan and a, a wooden spoon and make an even louder noise or, and that, or, or tip a bucket of water over your head? <laughs> you know, this is, this is, this could escalate. I don't, I don't like where this is going. So this is your opportunity now, Adam. So have you got a book that you'd like to tell the list? I was going to say listeners, but it could well be listener. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's just going to be Samuel. Right, Samuel. So uh, uh, I'm going to tell you about a book called Cookie and the Most Annoying Boy in the World. Oh. And it's written by Connie Huck, who is a brilliant author. And it's about a girl called Cookie, who I, I, I read it and I sort of related to because she is slight. She she's. I don't know. Um, a bit nerdy. I don't. I'm, mm-hmm. And I, I mean nerdy in the best possible way because I think I'm a bit nerdy. She really likes science, and she is very honest and forthright and frank. And it's a very funny book that reminded me a lot about growing up in terms of her friends and her family. And it was just a really good story about uh, basically a new boy at her school who she describes as the most annoying boy in the world. And I really enjoyed it. And I think other people would too. Excellent. Well, so we'll put that down as your tremendous book recommendation. We'd like to pass over to you to give a shameless plug. And we know you've got um, another book coming out, but you've also got lots of other projects on as well. So would you like to, uh, to tell us your shameless plug? Yeah, I'm very lucky at the moment to be busy with all sorts of things being on stage in theatres and my show being on television. But I think the thing I'm most proud of uh, right now is the book we mentioned at the start called... Kay's Anatomy, a complete and completely disgusting guide to the the human body. And um, because as well as all of the disgusting stuff, it secretly, and I shouldn't be telling you this, it secretly (laughs) includes all of the facts about the body you need to, you know, that you'll be taught at school for years and years and years. And hopefully it's in an interesting way. And I talk as well about how the body works, about how it sometimes doesn't work Mm. and um uh because you know lots of people listening will have things like asthma or diabetes or epilepsy or they'll know people who do in their class or they have members of the family who've had problems with their hearts or their brains or whatever it is and Mm. I go through all of this because some of this stuff can be scary unless you know a bit about it and um and hopefully, if you read this book, you will find it disgusting and you will find it funny. But hopefully you'll also find it interesting too. Yeah, it's like giving you lots of really interesting facts in a very entertaining, entertaining and interesting way. All of them. I and mean, they've been incredibly successful and I'm sure they're going to go on to be even more successful. Have you got more ideas for doing different books after the I do. Your next something- one? Yes, that's something I'm thinking of at the moment. Although I am, I'm still finishing off putting the finishing touches to Kay's marvelous medicine. And any time I speak to my publisher about the next book, they're like, "Do you want to just, do you want to just finish this one first? I'm like, "Okay, fine." I think the most exciting <laughs> part of writing is often coming up with the ideas in the first place. That's one of the best bits. I love the coming up with the ideas bit, and I love it when the books are on the shelves and people are mm. reading it, and I can hear what they think about it, unless they hate it. Um, and then there's the annoying bit in the middle when you actually have to write. How do you enjoy? Doing- Doing events has that been? I'm I sure love you, events. And I bet I, I've I've missed doing them a lot because uh, obviously it hasn't been possible to do things in in person. And um, um, it's been you know 
it's been it's been all right doing things over Zoom and online, but mm. it's not as good as actually meeting your readers face to face and then asking you questions. And uh, but um, yeah, I, lo- I, I love it. You you write for people to read, mm-hmm. and it's it just completes the circle nicely when you actually get to to meet them. Yeah, it's also really kids inter- are very 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 honest, aren't they? They about are what they think <laughs> about things. Oh yes, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And sometimes I suppose, you know, when I'm when I'm doing my books, because I've done um, so many of them over the last few. I mean, I've got I, I reckon I've got a certain amount of information that I can keep in my head. And as soon as I've finished one book and I've closed it and I've put it to one side and I'm thinking about the next one, I almost forget what's in the one I've just done. <laughs> you know, you're just you're just moving on yeah. to the next one. So kids yeah. quite often know more about the books, and they'll ask me questions about the characters or what's happening. I had this one little boy that asked me about a character called June. What's happened to June? And I was like, June? <laughs> oh, <laughs> I've t- right. forgotten about that. Or they somebody was I was drawing something, and one kid asked me, "Draw Bandit." I could not remember what Bandit was or what it was at all. <laughs> So they quite, they often do. They rem- they absolutely. Were you, were you know a bit a like, more. oh, sorry, I've just got to, just got, I've just got a text message. I've got to reply to and quickly googling a, a picture of what you've drawn. That's what doctors I... do. If they, if a doctor ever says, oh, could we get like a urine sample or something? That's generally to get you out of the room so they can quickly Google whatever you've got wrong with you. And they're googling disgusting rash on nose, and then they, they Google that. So when you come back with the urine sample, like, why does he want a sample of my wee? And you come back and they go, okay, I know what cream to give you. <laughs> I'm laughing, but scarily, that's probably absolutely true, isn't it? Certainly, what I did. Yeah. <laughs> But it's okay. You're not a doctor anymore. So. That's true. Everyone's <laughs> safe. <laughs> Thank you so much, Adam. You've been an absolute delight to talk to. Um, you've Thanks given for having us me. Loads of your time. And I've got one more thing that I would like to give you. <gasps> so when children write into me, we're, I quite often give them a, a red Tom Gates badge for um, something that they've done that's creative. And then we've got other badges as well. And I thought in recognition of all the work and the, mon- the money that you've raised for charity as well, that we are going to give you... A blue Tom Gates badge, which will be winging its way no towards way. you. Yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> I will wear him blue. with pride. So we're going to hand that over to you. And, and, um, my, and my nephews and nieces who very much love Tom Gates will be Trez jealous of me. Oh, will they? Oh. They will indeed. <laughs> Adam, thanks again for being such a fantastic guest. And I'll try and help you to keep your top uncle status intact. And I'll send your nephews a little Tom Gates something as well. So if you've got a tremendous tale at home that you'd like to share with me, please do go to my website, lizpichon.com, where you'll find all the details of how to get in touch. And just a quick reminder that Adam was a doctor, so make sure that you don't go trying to stitching yourself up. (laughs) It's not a good idea. (laughs) And you still need to eat your vegetables as well, not just chocolate. So thank you for listening. And until next time, bye. (sighs) 